All right, everyone. I want to do a couple of examples of stoichiometry for people, just so I feel like people are not kind of catching on. I feel like if people maybe weren't paying attention for a couple of days, they might feel a little bit lost right now. So let's say here's a sample problem. I took this right from the most recent worksheet I gave everybody. Uh, given the following chemical reaction, uh, this is sodium chlorate reacting to form sodium chloride and oxygen. It says, hey, if I give you 12 moles of sodium chlorate, uh, how many grams of oxygen will this produce? So I realize that this is a, a little bit frightening to people that they're not really sure, well, what it, exactly is the problem asking? What is it given? But the first thing you can kind of be confident on doing anytime is determining what the ratio of moles of ingredients and products. Uh, so this problem is specifically asking me about this and this. So I need to come up to the chemical equation and find out where those two things are. There is the sodium chlorate and there is the oxygen. So right now this chemical equation is like a recipe and it has a 2 to 3 ratio of sodium chlorate to oxygen. So that's what I'm going to write down first. Okay, so I took the liberty of writing down the ratio of sodium chlorate to oxygen. This is something you can do immediately when you encounter a stoichiometry problem. And then I want to know, well, what is the ratio? Again, uh, people have a lot of questions about this. I'm literally looking at the number that comes right out front. That number is going to tell me the ratio. It's also called a mole ratio. So if I'm doing sodium chloride to oxygen, that ratio is going to be 2 to 3. So, I mean, a ratio is a ratio. If I have a cheeseburger, there's going to be two parts buns to one part burger. There's going to be one part burger to one part cheese. There's going to be two parts buns to one part cheese. So, I mean, a ratio is a ratio. We can have ratios of molecules or ratios of moles. Okay, so this isn't the answer to the problem, but this is the, the first place where people start. And I also want to caution people, I just see a lot of people writing random fractions down on the page. And unless you really know what you're doing, um, it's very easy to get mixed up. So this 2 over 3 ratio is this ratio. It's a ratio of sodium chloride to oxygen. So what I want to do here is say, I know this 2 to 3 ratio is equal to what I'm given. So what am I given? The problem says, uh, I'm being given 12 moles of sodium chloride. I want to know how much oxygen I can produce. Now forget about the fact that it says grams right now, because the only thing we can get with this ratio process is a ratio of the number of moles I either have or produce. So the, don't ever put grams or anything in this process, it's only moles. So I'm going to put in what I know, and I know it gives me 12 moles of NaCl2, so that 12 has to go on the top. And I don't know how much oxygen I'm going to form. I mean, but the thing I do know is that whatever the amount of oxygen, moles of oxygen I'm going to get, it's going to be a 12 to 3 ratio. So 12 moles of NaClO3 to X oxygen is exactly equal to a 2 to 3 ratio. Some people like to work this out in their heads. Uh, the 12 is basically 6 times bigger than the 2, so the X has to be 6 times bigger than the 3. If you don't see that immediately, you can also you can always cross multiply. So cross multiplying, cross multiplying, I'm going to do the two times the x, two x equals three times twelve. And I'll write this out here. But um, whoops, that's a twelve. Yes. Okay, I fixed that. So three times twelve is thirty-six. And then I have to divide both sides by 2, so I end up with x equals 36 over 2, or 18. Now, it's not just a random number. I don't just come up with 18 uh, beanbag chairs or 18 big bananas or Big Macs. It's rep this 18 represents a specific number of things. This 18 represents the number of moles of oxygen that I get if I started with 12 moles of sodium chlorate. So there has to be units to go on here. Okay, so it's not just the random number random number 18. It's actually 18 moles of oxygen. So 
now I'm actually going to take a look at the problem and say, what actually does it want me to find? Besides just oxygen, it actually wants me to find uh, grams of oxygen, right? So I don't have grams of oxygen right now. I have moles. But I do know the process to get grams is to take whatever I have in moles multiplied by the molar mass of what I'm trying to find. Well, I'm not trying to, I'm not going to use the molar mass of sodium chlorate. I'm going to use the molar mass of oxygen. Okay? So uh, I know that I'm going to take 18 grams and I'm going to multiply this. Yeah, right. Hold on. Okay, that's better. So to do this, um, I'm going to take 18 moles and multiply it by, I need to find the molar mass of oxygen and O2. Uh, the individual oxygen has a molar, a molar mass of 16, but there's two oxygen atoms per oxygen molecule. So that's going to give me a molar mass of 32. Okay? So 18 moles of oxygen times 32 grams per mole. Uh, if I do this, the moles cancel out. It leaves me with the units of grams, but I kind of have to multiply 18 to 32 right now. Okay, there we are. Uh, so 18 moles of oxygen, and every one mole of oxygen is 32 grams. So if I multiply these two, I get 576 grams of oxygen. So basically, 12 moles of this, if I can get it in there and write it, 12 moles of this will give me 576 grams of oxygen. All right? So here's problem number one. Uh, the next problem I'm going to do is going to be a little bit more complicated. All right, so hold on a second. Okay, so this is a new problem. Given the following chemical equation, uh, sodium, this is sodium oxide plus water, produces sodium hydroxide. Uh, I notice this equation is balanced. Uh, there's no coefficients out in front of the sodium, hydro sodium oxide in water because the coefficients are 1. If you want to enter coefficients of 1, you feel free to. Anyways, it says I need to find out what I'm looking for. So the two things I see here are sodium hydroxide and sodium oxide. So I don't see any other compounds. So I am just going to come and make the molar ratio out of those two things. Okay? So I'm going to come back. i got to look at uh, what the coefficient is for sodium oxide and the coefficient is for sodium hydroxide. And then I'm going to write a ratio for that. Okay, so I chose to write the ratio of sodium oxide over sodium hydroxide. I could have wrote, written it as sodium hydroxide over sodium oxide. I just would have to change what the ratio is. So this ratio, uh, the coefficient is a 1, and the sodium hydroxide coefficient is a 2. So this is like 50% like of the work of the problem, just getting this far, right? Okay, so now I'm going to take a, a deeper look and say, there's a lot of information up here. What is the problem actually giving me, and what does it want to find? Well, if you look, I'm going to change color here. Uh, these two things are basically, they're basically telling you molar masses. So it's telling you the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, and it's telling you the molar mass of sodium oxide. But that's not really what it's looking for. It does say produced from 120 grams of this. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say, this is my starting ingredient. All right, so I need to figure something out from here. And it also says how many grams of this. It doesn't, obviously it doesn't say this. It says how many grams of this is produced. So it wants me to know how much of this, all right? So I can kind of come over here to my ratio and I know where to put the X. The thing that it's asking me for, that's what I'm going to put in my ratio is an X. So the top part, what do I do up here? All right, so the top number. Uh, well, a lot of people instantly want to come over and put whatever other number is given, like 120. So, But if you put 120 in here, uh, you're, you're wrong because this is not a ratio of masses. It's a ratio of moles. So I can't do anything with this number right now. I've got to go back and kind of get rid of it. So what I have to do is take 120 grams and first have to convert it into moles. And then I can take the result of this number and plug it back in on the top and use the mole ratio. Does that make sense? Okay, so let me do this first. Let me, let's calculate and find out how many moles are in 120 grams of sodium oxide. 
Okay. Okay. So to take to take grams and turn it into moles, I have to divide by the molar mass. And these people were kind enough to give us the molar mass of sodium hydroxide already. So I can just take the 120 divided by 61.98, and the unit is grams per moles. Uh, so if you like units, when you flip this, the moles comes in the numerator. In other words, you get units of moles for the answer. So let me pause for a second to get the answer for that. Okay, I got an answer of 1.936. Uh, you know what, let's make it easy. Let's call that 1.94. Now that is not a random number. This is the number of moles that are in 120 grams of sodium oxide. So I'm going to write that down. Okay, 1.94 moles sodium oxide. Now I can take this number and bring it and put it up on top right here. Okay, so on top I'm going to put 1.94. And I can finally use the molar ratio. So I'm going to cross multiply 1 times x. I think I just said cross multiply, but you kind of get what I mean. Uh, 1 times x equals 2 times 1.94. Well, because it's 1 times x, basically x is going to be 2 times this number. Let me see if I can do that in my head. Nope, I can't. Well, I mean, I probably could have if I maybe thought about it for like 3 or 4 seconds. But we are going to rely on the miracle of the modern calculator. All right, so I end up with a number. Again, it's not a random number. It is specifically down here. It is moles of NaOH. Moles of NaOH. You try writing with a mouse. All right, so like, is that it? I feel like I'm out of breath. I'm tired. Uh, is that what the problem is asking, asking me? By the way, this does not look like the word moles at all. Uh, so it says how many grams of NaOH. Okay, so we're not off the hook yet. I have to take this number and convert it from moles to the big G, the big grams, all right? So you remember how to do that? Go look it up real quick. How do I convert moles to grams? You ready? You got it yet? Yeah, you got to take moles and multiply it by molar mass. So we're going to go moles times molar mass. That is what gets us grams. So I've got 3.88. I make my eights funny. 3.88 moles of sodium hydroxide, and they're very nice, and they give us the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to multiply this by 40 and pause for a minute to get an answer. And I end up with 155.2 grams of NaOH. Okay, so we're basically saying if I started this chemical reaction with 120 grams of this, and let's assume I had enough water to go along with it, I could produce 155.2 grams of sodium hydroxide. And that's really what stoichiometry is all about. It's not about a chemistry teacher, an evil chemistry teacher trying to make your life miserable. This is a very useful process in chemistry. Uh, if we know what we're starting with, we can calculate exactly what we're going to end up with. And uh, this is the subject of our next lab as well. Okay, I hope this video is worthwhile. I hope it helps answer questions. Watch it a lot. Do extra problems while you watch this video to figure out and build your problem-solving skills. All right? All right, see ya.